Hey, welcome everybody to another Tech Tip Tuesday episode. Here we are at the end of the month, the last day of February 2023. And uh, my name is Ken Close. I'm a Healy World member, like most of you guys are, uh, engineer and uh, familiar with Healy technology. <laughs> Had lots of fun with it over the years. And I'm blessed to be uh, joined by my amazing co host. Jake Barron from Head of Operations of Americas. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Hello, Ken. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. And we've got Henry tonight, right? At the That's uh, right. at the helm in the, uh, in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> Yay. So guys, go ahead and go in there and say hello to Henry. And of course, um, add your questions in there so that we can start taking care of you. So if you're new to Tech Tip Tuesday, well, first of all, welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, if you're veterans of Tech Tip Tuesday, you know what we're doing, but I'm going to explain it anyway. Uh, this is a chat-based forum where we take your questions around the Healy technology, around the Healy operations, theories, systems, all that good stuff. From the chat, we take them to the live call here, and we uh, do our very best to unpack those questions and find solutions. So uh, what we can't do is we can't diagnose, treat, prevent, or even talk about really any diseases or applications that um, are to address such. So uh, sorry about that, but we have an amazing app that does all that, which is our Heal Advisor app, right? Right down here, you see beside my shoulder. So anyway, that's what we can and what we can't do. Um, I say let's have some fun doing what we can do. How about that, Jake? It sounds perfect. <laughs> All right, you guys. So hit us with your best shot. What do you got for questions tonight? <laughs> I'm always interested. All well, right. First question here, I think, is a great one. It says, is it possible to get desensitized to microcurrents? Ooh, well. I think that's 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 a great question because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you start out, you know, some people... Are, are more sensitive to microcurrent than others. Some people feel an actual sensation in their hands, sort of a tingling or, you know, depending on the frequency that's being delivered. And, you know, may, maybe one time they start out, they run a program and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa okay, that's, that's, I gotta maybe turn it down a little bit, not maybe not too much. And then other day, maybe they're running the same program and they don't feel anything at all. But does that mean that the program isn't working or they didn't, or they got desensitized or whatever because you know that that can vary from day to day in the frequencies that are being delivered how much that you feel and how hydrated you are you know might one day you might have to put it up to 80 percent and then the, the other day you're down at 40 percent you start to feel something already so there's a lot of different variables there i think but as far as actually being desensitized to microcurrents i guess sort of like building a tolerance so to speak there yeah, there's so when when we look at the at the body itself, um, the body is a um, is an acclimation machine. So in 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 epigenetics, um, it is the environment that signals the gene, right? So in other words, our body needs to adapt and um, uh, integrate with its environment. How many of you guys have ever gone to the gym and first time you ever worked out, you were a little bit sore. Uh, the next time, a little less, and so on and so on. After about a year's time, you know, you can go in there and hit the gym, do the same routine and really not feel um, the physical effects. And yet the body's still acclimating to the environment. So when it comes to microcurrent, same analogy is true. The body does um, integrate and, and become more familiar with. But as Jake said, there are variables. Uh, some days, have you ever just felt like you're like, no energy, right? Just kind of in a bad mood, just kind of, I mean, these things are low. There are um, influences uh, astrologically. There's influences um, from uh, demographics, you know, if you've been moving around, that kind of thing. So there's influences on the body that that do have um, some kind of a shift in, in the way that we um, accept things. So number one, folks, hydration, Jake said it, I love this. Um, hydration is the key to many, many things. And I'll tell you why. Because um, as a performance trainer, I teach people physical performance and that kind of thing. And, and, and I know that just 3%, and this is 
science, just 3% dehydration in the body equates to up to 10% loss of muscle strength, up to 8% loss of muscle speed or contractile um, abilities. So hydration is big. Uh, and so when it comes to microcurrent, that's how microcurrent is is transmitted through the body, through the water. And the information is um, transmitted via that electron flow. And so we need to make sure we're hydrated. Um, can you sometimes feel it more than others? Sure. Uh, as you use this system a lot more, the body's going to get familiar. And uh, doesn't mean, though, that you're not getting the benefit just the same as when you first started. But remember, when you first started, you're probably in a lesser health, less healthier version of yourself than after using Healy for quite some time. Um, and so, yeah, you're going to be in better shape. All right. And, I mean, you don't need to feel the microcurrent for it to be working. You know, but actually the reverse <laughs> opposite sort of true there in many cases where you, you don't, you want to increase it to where you feel a tiny bit and then back it down a notch because that way your body's not fighting against um, this is just happening naturally in the background without even noticing. So, you know, if, you, if you're worried that you're not feeling the sensations anymore, so they're not working, that's not, not the case at all. As long as you're getting that frequency wave that's properly flowing when you're running the program, it's all good. So. Exactly. Because it, it's Healy is measuring you to uh, confirm that there is electron flow from one lead to the other or that the coil is engaged in using, uh, it's operating properly. So it's measuring you. And, uh, you know, you've got that on the new Healy app. It says there's a message across there. Uh, when you no longer have signal, it's going to tell you. And so make sure uh, that that is engaged. And, and as Jake said, um, the moment we start feeling a sensation, I don't, you know, I, I don't care if we're too hot because we're outside the sun or, or if we're, we have a sore foot, or if we have microcurrent, the moment we start becoming aware of it, the mind goes right to that area, right to that issue, right to that condition. And it starts to, it starts to add to the fight or flight or the agitation state of the body. We don't want that, right? We don't want the body or our mind to start paying attention to what's going on because then it starts to kind of hinder the process. Okay. So yeah, good stuff there. Great question. Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, let's see. Next uh, one I see is related to the analyze app. This is a lot of people are having problems with the analyze app dropping out. So last night, um, the analyze app on my Resonance Plus dropped out, and dude, dude did the device and it disappeared from my account. Luckily, my professional is still there. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. That They're saying that the Analyze app can no longer find their device as maybe the, I don't know this is a Bluetooth question here or what, but um, it would it certainly wouldn't be a common situation for it to just the device to disappear from your account completely. So it sounds like there might be some sort of connectivity issue going on here. Have you heard anything about that? Not not something that's necessarily system wide, but the yeah. uh, but the blue dot um, analyze app uh, is is not linked to a device, right? It's it's not yeah. it's it, remember when you log in you you're logging in by your account credentials and all the Healy's, um, you know are, are if you have that um, addition that uh, allows for the resonance or that analysis function, all of them should be available to be interfaced with. So in other words. You log into your account, um, and then it's going to ask at one point to uh, it's going to search for Healy's, right? And then you turn your Healy on, and uh, it should link to to that particular Healy. Okay, so um, it, when if it's dropping out, in other words, you've accomplished all that, you've logged in, you're functioning, and then somehow uh, when you're using the word drops out. Um, loses connection let's call it that loses connection with the Healy hardware in other words the bluetooth signal is hindered or drop uh, con disconnect somehow um i would i would look at any other interference of course distance between the smart device and the Healy itself is critical um remember the 
Bluetooth is what's called BLE or Bluetooth low energy. And it only has a 32 foot range and that's line of sight. So in other words, if your Healy is in one room and you walk with your cell phone to another room, the wall itself also starts to hinder the distance. Okay, so um, the, the 32 feet is line of sight. It's a very, very low power Bluetooth signal. And this is on purpose, not, not by accident. It's on purpose. So, um, so paying attention and minding that would be important as well. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Let's see. Here's a question. It says, when I scan the Healy programs, um, um, I've only been registering 60% or lower. Why would that be? Okay, so I'm assuming in a resonance scan. I, I just had this conversation today with somebody, actually, which is a, which is a great question. Um, because, you know, when you do a scan, there is a percentage, which, which equates to the relevancy of that particular entity whatever database you use to scan, you know, if you use the, um, the all Healy program scan, uh, then it's going to show you the results are going to be in Healy program pages, right? If you use Bachflower, same thing, it's going to show you in Bachflower remedies, but each remedy or each um, entity is assigned a percentage. This is called the, uh, the intensity uh, in which it's influencing your life. Now, when we, when we set out to do some work, on ourselves, right? First of all, we're aware of some condition and we start doing some work on ourselves. Okay, then whatever Healy is going to reveal is probably going to be a lower percentage. Things that are up in the 90s and 80 percentiles, those are things that it is found um, are super relevant in your life because you haven't done anything. You probably haven't done any work in it in within the the Healy modalities or whatever it's whatever it's trying to tell you to do. Things that are a lower percentage um, are still relevant in your life. I mean, I don't know any human out there that's that doesn't need some form of healing, right? I don't know of any human. But the point is, is that um, that these percentages do equate to um, the intensity in your life. And if it's low intensity, um, it's still a priority system. So in other words, 60%, 59, 55, 40, and so on still gives a um, sequence, right? The higher the numbers just means that the more um, influence it is in your life or the higher attention you need to pay uh, and the more you should work on that. Make sense? Did I lose you, Jake? No, I'm here. I'm here. Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. I get those too, by the way. Sometimes it's the, you know, there's nothing above 50% <laughs> on a scan. Yeah, it's every day you're not going to find something that's 70% or 80%, you know, so. Well, hope not. If you're doing some work on yourself, you should find <laughs> things that are, there's some progress, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Lindley was confirming that the device cannot be found when I was doing the resonance analysis back to that prior question. Okay, so let's, um, do you have any other apps open in the background? Question number one. Question number two, did you have this Healy app open before, right? And connected to this Healy app with the, the microcurrent app, because if the Bluetooth device, or the Bluetooth chip can only be connected to one app at a time. Okay, so within the Healy, the Bluetooth chip is turned on by a very specific signal from one of the Healy apps. So like, for instance, um, your, I don't know, your um, email app can't turn the Bluetooth signal on on the, on the Healy. Only one of these Healy apps can, all right? Um, so if you've connected to the Pink Dot app or the Healy 2 app, before and you go to try to do something with the blue dot app it won't find your device so you have to hard close and i want you guys to make sure you understand how to hard close an app on your smart device if you don't know how there's a amazing youtube video for it just <laughs> search within youtube on how to hard close yeah we actually on the the last healy for beginners and beyond we did a we did a tutorial a demo on how to hard close 
uh, app. So that was the the one from February second. Uh, so that recording is on our YouTube page at HealyAmericas.com, and you can just find that segment and, and watch that part there too. So actually, this is probably a good time to talk. About. Speaking of the Healy for <laughs> Beginners and Beyond, uh, we are this Thursday at three p.m. Eastern time. Ken Close and myself are going to be having our next Healy for Beginners and Beyond, and this one. It's very exciting. You know, this is something that, you know, Ken, Ken has talked about this a lot. He's a lot of experience with this topic, but we are going to talk specifically, do a deep dive into uh, doing a resonance analysis or scan on a remote client. So a lot of re remote talk. We've had a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks or months. So um, again, that's, that's, I'm going to share the, might as well share the agenda right now while we're talking about this, just so you can kind of get a, sneak peek at what's to come here. So this is what we're going to talk about. You know, we're going to talk about a little bit about quantum entanglement, what exactly that means, how that relates to the information field, uh, how to set up a client who is remote, and what information is required and why that information is so significant, uh, especially when doing remote scan, the difference between recording vibration remote versus in person, and then your role as the facilitator in this process versus you doing this on yourself um, in person, because there's di many key differences to keep in mind when you're doing that. And then you know, a couple of questions about how often should you do a, a new analysis or do you ever need to rescan or re-record re uh, vibration? And then along the way, we're going to, we're going to, normally we just go straight through our agenda on Healy for Beginners and Beyond, but we're going to try to, I'll be trying to pull some of the questions from the chat uh, while we're going through this and see what else we can answer along the way. But uh, this is going to be a very, very exciting, I think very fun, uh, fun call. So that's 3 p.m. Eastern time uh, this coming Thursday, March 2nd. And you can join the Zoom call by just going directly to HealyFBB.com. So hope to see um, all of you on that call and invite anybody else, you know, from your, your teams that might be interested in, in this topic. Yeah, definitely share it. We'll be um, I'll be posting that on the uh, Team Healy USA Telegram page uh, probably tonight, and then um, or later today here. And so that same picture that you saw right there will be on that, and you can jump on there. So hopefully, maybe some of you guys uh, took a screenshot of that. But here, regardless, it'll be on that yep. on that uh, page. So yay! All right, I'm excited. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of questions that's uh, about this about non-local um uh -huh. the Healy function. So yeah. Okay. Uh so Marge asks, confirming that the IMF program schedule works on one issue or topic at a time. So IMF yeah. program schedule. Yeah, yeah. In the, the Heal Advisor search module. Um, yeah, the, the in the prior search, you could add up to three topics at a time, but with the, the recent changes, uh, the, the schedule is for one specific issue topic at a time. So it is it is correct. Confirming that that is correct. <laughs> yep. Confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Julie says, comparing the original Healy Academy to two, uh, two years ago to... The gold quantum information. What's the difference? Um, is it worth going through the? Where did I just did I just change? Okay, is it worth going through it all again? Also, so now first of all, the academy from two years ago is not the same <laughs> as the academy today. It's way better. A lot of cool stuff there. Um, the gold quantum academy is content that's also from our back office, um, but um, the Gold Quantum gives some some more, uh, a lot more features too. So Jake, you want to add anything to that as far as? You know, I mean, the, the Gold Quantum is, you know, it's a completely third party platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our, our academy is, is what we have here from the, the corporate side. And actually, if you join us for Frequencies and Friends tomorrow, which is at noon Eastern time, um that's a that's gonna be a zoom call there, there was an email newsletter that went out uh i think it was yes yesterday or the day before with the the link to join that call i will put that link into the chat for anyone that didn't get that email newsletter but we're going to talk a little bit about the the 
the new academy that's coming here at Healy. There's some some changes and enhancements coming soon. So, um, you know, I can't really compare the two side by side, but you know, if you want to try out Go Quantum, you're you're certainly welcome to. Um, you know, there's you don't have to sign up for a year on that platform. You can just do a month at a time and see if it's if it's what you're you're looking for. So. Yeah, there's some, there's some, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a good platform for yeah. somebody who wants some assistance in their business, but again, it is a third party thing. So, um, yeah. the, the, like from two, they, the, by the way, though, you got to admit the Academy from two years ago versus the Academy, the Healy Academy from today is way better. <laughs> yeah. It's great stuff. And it's about to get even better. So, yep. Yay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Marjorie says, sometimes my heel advisor says unable to sync. Um, I was trying to do a demo today and was unable to, um, this happens on occasion. Is there certain day of the month when maintenance is being done? No, not certain day of the month, but, um, so when you're trying to sync, so first of all, if you're going to, my advice is that, uh, and I do this, um, I go into the settings and I turn off the auto sync. Right, so that I can manually control when that happens. So in the case I happen to be wanting to work with a client, I open my advisor and all of a sudden, boom, it jumps into synchronization. And maybe I don't have a good Wi-Fi signal. Maybe I don't have good internet connection. Whatever it is, it's going to hinder the ability for uh, the heel advisor uh, to synchronize. So a little hint to why perhaps it's saying unable to sync. Because again, it, it needs a data pathway. Um, the app needs a data pathway through the, to the smart device in order to download from the cloud. Okay, so now we're, we're seeing a cycle here, right? Um, if your smart device doesn't have a, a very good bandwidth for its data pathway, in other words, you're, I don't know, traveling or you're in a bad cell reception site uh, or you're on a Wi-Fi somewhere, that has a whole bunch of users on it and the bandwidth is very low. So it's gonna take a while or it may fail. It may fail and say unable to sync. Um, so you can postpone that by, by turning your auto sync off in your Heal Advisor app under the settings um, and then do it at your leisure. So, um, but as far as what Healy does in terms of maintenance, um, you know, we we've been getting notices sometimes <laughs> i don't know if we always get notices when they're doing maintenance but um but there is occasion and i'll give you another little hint towards the end of a month when there's an amazing special going on and there's a lot of sales sometimes that synchronization process takes longer so you might want to look at that timing by the way, we're at the end of a cycle. Well, we, we we're kind of over it now. And there was a great special, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe a lot of sales were happening. Yeah. All right. Um, where were we? <laughs> with, with Okay. So Julie's got one here says, uh, for us with older Heelys, what does it look like when the battery completely gives out and what's the process for uh, remedying this problem? Now, older Healy's, I mean, no matter how old your Healy is, I mean, you still have a Healy account, you can always buy a new hardware device, right? You can always replace the actual hardware. You don't have to buy a whole new addition. You just re can replace this hardware um, through the customer service uh, portal. So, you know, you can get that the newest, latest, greatest um, version. And, uh, and then just assign it, they'll assign it to your account and then it'll have all the bells and whistles of your account. Uh, it'll actually have a little bit more because if you have the old um, firmware 226 versus the new firmware 229, you'll get a cool little icon where you can turn the Bluetooth off and on, right? You'll get a couple of extra little things. Um, but um, how do you know that that battery's toast? Um, you know, there is a kind of a recycling or a resetting process um of that uh, battery charge cycle uh, that we've talked about before here um but you know if you're just convinced that's the deal that's how you do it there is a, a portal in the back office yeah it's 
it's it's pretty simple to do unless Ken mentioned no matter which edition you had um, if you do need a replacement after the warranty ends you know after two years uh, I believe it's like 360 USD right now plus any shipping and any taxes on top of that but you know, if you have a professional edition you're not paying for a new professional edition you're just paying for the hardware replacement yeah yeah I love it I mean just like your any any rechargeable device yeah right? you know eventually you'll you'll have some issues with with the hardware um how many of you guys have ever had to replace batteries in your phone or the phone itself right I don't know how many I have yeah, but you know I mean we have many my Healy's you know older than two years old now and it's, it works to me it works just as it did when I when I first got it so um it's it's I think it's important you know like to to do the proper um battery maintenance too to not recharge it every single time you're on a program you know let it fully cycle through let it completely discharge and then fully charge so you know if you run a program and then immediately put it back on the charger you know you could maybe shorten that that life of that battery a little bit so yeah it needs a full uh, a full discharge and full charge cycles on a regular basis in other words um i, I do it i do it almost every time rarely do i ever just mm -hmm. you know not deplete my device completely and then recharge it completely uh, rarely i mean I mean, very, I mean, might've been one time ever I was desperate and I'm like, Oh, I got to plug it in right now and give it five minutes of charge. So I didn't finish, <laughs> but no, completely do that. Um, yeah. And then the question here was, do you have to send the old unit back? So when they, when they, when you go through that replacement process where it's sort of, you go into the shop and you pick the device that's being replaced and then you get the new one, the old device is permanently deactivated in that process. So it can no longer be used at all so you want to make sure you pick, pick the right one <laughs> yeah pick the right one and because they'll actually customer service actually will probably ask you to take a picture of the back of it so that they've got the serial number um so that there's a physical tangible device mm -hmm. you take a picture of right send that in um when they'll when you apply for that replacement um uh, and then yeah that serial number is de deactivated forever yes Okay. Uh, let's see. So Sheila's got one here. Did I skip anybody? I think you. Yeah, I think that's the next one. Okay. Hi, everybody. Quick question. Um, we can run a program for all Healy programs uh, for a... Uh, wait a minute. Run for a bit. Go to another program. Come back. And it's still, and it's different, but we didn't place our finger on the returning to all. Um, hang on, trying to. Uh, yeah, trying to. Get... Trying to process this question here. <laughs> all right. We can run a program for all Healy programs. In other words, if we're running a scan, if, that, if that's what you're talking about. So in the resonance, can, let's get some clarity here because when we run a program, what are we talking about running a program? Are we running a microcurrent program um, with the the Healy Pink Dot app, you know, just microcurrent? And I'm, I'm telling you, Jake, I'm finding people, I don't know if there's misinformation going on out there, but I'm finding people that um, don't even, aren't really understanding the difference between the microcurrent programs and the Blue Dot programs. And they're, I mean, it's interesting how, um, I, I mean, there's just uh, some differences between those two. So for yeah. running a program with the microcurrent, in other words, it doesn't matter if we're using the coil like I am right now, or I'm connected via the wristbands or the sticky pads. I am running microcurrent um, out of the Healy hardware, out of the port, the two ports in the bottom of the Healy, through either the, electro the wires the the electrodes or through the coil so that's one modality all right so if we're running that modality once you send the program to the healy hardware from the app from their smart device you send it to the healy hardware all of the contents to run that program are stored in the memory of the healy they're in the healy the hardware of the healy you can actually turn the app off 
turn the phone off, get way far away from it, whatever. And the Healy will still run the program in its entirety for the timed cycle, or at least the time cycle, maybe less, depends on how your body um, um, integrates, and then shuts off. So, you know, the, it, it won't start another program by itself. It won't switch over to another program. It runs its entirety. If we're talking about um, some programs running from the Blue Dot or the um, Resonance app, now um, we've got a certain timer with when we start running the vibration phase that we can connect to a certain timed interval and it will run for that entirety and then stop. So I'm not sure if that Yeah, I, I think she mentioned when we were turned, it was different. So I don't know if she's referring to, you know, if you, if you run a vibrate some programs, say the all Healy programs, then go do something else, run some different programs. You come back and run that from your list as a, you know, prior scan. You don't have to use your finger again. You're just running that exact set of programs. You don't have to re-scan because you're you're using that existing scan from the past. So I think maybe that's what you're referring to. When you come back to it, you don't have to put your you know your finger on it again because it's 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 using the same information from the from before. Right. But she's saying uh, but she's saying the list changes. Um. Yeah. I mean. I... <laughs> If the list is changing, so so in other words, let's say again what what Jake's talking about, we're we're using the Blue Dot app, right? We're we're scanning a client ourselves or a client, we're scanning them uh, within the resonance modality, and we're coming up with a, and we're using the database of all Healy programs, and it's coming up with a list, as Jake mentioned. There's a list, and that list is kept within the client's record. So now all these lists are saved. And if you um, start running that particular list, um, it's going to run for the entire period of time in which you've chosen. Um, and then when you're done and say you go back to that same list again and you want to run it again, it should be the same content, right? Same sequence, same content, same list. And you can run it again. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Uh... Lindley is, is referring back to, she says, I always hard close my phone. Um, probably referring back to us talking about hard closing mm -hmm. an app. Now, hard closing an app um, is one thing. Hard closing the phone is like turning the power off, right? So that kind of recycles yeah. it also. <laughs> so um, if, if you're doing that process and you cannot connect to either the either the blue dot or the pink app, the Healy 2 app. If you can't connect for some reason, um, it won't connect to the Bluetooth. Um, then here's my suggestion. Step one is to go to your settings on your smart device, turn the Bluetooth off, right? In the settings, turn in that Bluetooth function off on your smart device. And then, then turn the smart device off. Okay, now the smart device is off, Bluetooth is off. And then take your Healy, press and hold the power button up to 10 seconds until the green light comes on solid and then release the finger and it'll stay on solid for a few more seconds and shut off. All right, now the Healy's reset and your smart device is reset. So then go and turn your smart device back on. All right, I'm trying to say this slowly, so maybe you write it down. <laughs> turn your smart device back on, then go into settings, turn your Bluetooth back on. Okay, now those are on. Then turn your Healy on and then go back to the app and find the Healy. Give that a shot, right? Tell us how it goes. All right. Yeah, we actually, we did a, referring back to the last Healy for Beginners and Beyond from February 2nd, we did a also a demo of a hard reset, what that process looks like too. So let me, I'll, I'll put a link into the chat from that call just for anyone that wants to go back and reference it because a couple of things that have come up on this call we we did cover on that one. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, Bob's got a question here. Do you know if the Healy device works in tandem with QXCI? Uh, 
He says, I'm brand new. Just got my device today. Welcome woohoo, to the Healy family. <laughs> um, yes. So, so all the technology, there's a ton of technology out there. And this, I love technology. Let me, before we go in, I, I don't really like to address a specific product out there or, or system. What I do like to address is how does Healy interface, um, period. So in other words, this body in space and time, how does it interface? So first of all, here's my one sentence definition of Healy. Healy is a bridge between the quantum field of information and the biological and physical fields of matter. It literally builds a bridge. Now, how it does this is the internal hardware of Healy essentially has what Marcus calls a quantum sensor. This quantum sensor interfaces between an entity, right? A body in space and time and the information field. And the way it does that is via electron flow. Electrons, well, if you guys are understanding quantum physics, I don't want to go too deep into that, but any electron, any, any molecule out there uh, is comprised of many, many electrons and electrons are mostly empty space. And within that empty space is information. This links every electron to every electron. It, it links all things. And the only thing that separates in it in, in terms of one type of molecule and another is its frequency. And so Healy interfaces between um, matter, material body, um, and um, the information field. And so when you're connected via the microcurrent, it's actually sending very distinct signals into the body to find resonance with your body. doesn't matter what you're connected to. You could, you could be, um, you could be in a sauna. <laughs> you could be uh, running other frequency devices. Uh, you could even have EMF rejection systems all around you, but it's looking at the resonant frequency of your body. Now you can even have somebody sitting on your lap, by the way, and it's going to look at the resonant frequency of the, of the, combination right if there's skin to skin contact or if there's a magnetic interference to magnetic interference it's looking at the resonance of whatever it's connected to and this is utilizing this this app right here the pink dot or the microcurrent app it's finding the resonance of what it's connected to uh, and then it's going to use that data and then depend on what program you've chosen it's going to find frequencies specific to align the misalignments or out of residency of that entity and then start applying those frequencies in terms of microcurrent transmission. And remember, the microcurrent is just the, uh, the carrier, the pale, the carrier wave for, and it, it, for the frequencies. The, the, the microcurrent essentially is pulsed. The, the electron flow is, is agitated or vibrating at the frequencies um, that the program is giving to the body. All right. And the body is accepting, believing, and surrendering to that information. So it doesn't matter what you're connected to. I mean, this is what I, people ask me all the time. Well, what about this technology? And is it counterproductive with this technology? And well, if you're connected to electroshock therapy while you're using Healy, I would say it's probably not going to be effective, right? So uh, does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> all right. This is the cool thing about Healy. I mean, people have other modalities, you know, they have certain dietary uh, restrictions or supplementation regimens, or they have certain uh, physical um, things. They, they do certain crystals and, and um, minerals and things that they do right in their life, certain um, practices, energy practices, all of that is still great because it's, it's what you believe in that's working with you, that's helping you. Healy just helps you with all that. There's nothing it won't work with. Except for water. Do not go swimming with your Healy on. <laughs> do not. Yeah. Do not. yeah then, then you'll be lining up for that replacement process. <laughs> about, so. I've had people that accidentally washed their device before or, or dropped it in the river. Or, it's not yeah. good. Yeah. No different. Yeah, not good for it. <laughs> um, okay. I think I'm way behind on questions. I, I, 
think um, I think the next question we have Henry's been answering some things here, and um, there was a question about will frequencies and friends be recorded or if you're not available to watch them live. This one's actually on Zoom. Uh, it's not a webinar jam, so we are going to be able to have this recorded and put onto our YouTube page at heliamericas.com. So uh, later later in the week, it'll be available on that page. So Yeah, so there's no registration for the call. It's just that you yeah. in your email, you click on the tab, and you have to put in your name and your email address, um, and and then you're basically you'll you'll have the Zoom link. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to really register, but you do need to go through that little process to get in. And you could do it just before the call. You don't have to do it today. Well, you no use doing it today. <laughs> All right. Um, does Healy recycle their old units? Um, Jake, what do you guys do with those old units? <laughs> uh, it, it depends. <laughs> you know, we, we try to, you know, ones that come back, either we kind of troubleshoot them and see what we can reuse, maybe for, for demos internally or in advance or that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's not always possible to recycle everything as much as we, we would like to. So, you, you know, it's funny because I, I'm I'm sure you experienced this. I know I experienced this. I have people say, no, my Healy's dead. Doesn't work. Forget it. I want a replacement, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, you know, great. But I, I, uh, I'll ask them a lot of times, hey, can I just have it for a minute? <laughs> can I just give it my own little one too? And uh, I would say 90% of the time, it's not the Healy maybe even higher than that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I imagine some of those Heelys you get back are fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. We got a, a series of mag Healy questions, um, next here. So, um, first one, it says, does the mag Healy need to be on a flat surface area to run a program? So that that's not a requirement of the mag Healy, you know, the pet, some of the programs, if you're running, the atmosphere programs are just meant to be nearby, but a lot of the other programs are meant to actually be placed on you when you're running it, whether it's, you know, the back of the neck or on the abdomen or the upper thorax, that kind of thing. So you kind of want to pay attention to where it, where it's indicated um, in the program itself as far as where to, to place the mag Healy. Um, but just keep in mind the the, the magnetic uh, it's coming out of the, the bottom of the mag Healy. And then Henry answered this question here because one of the questions further down was um, if I put the mag Healy um, in the hallway to run programs while the, the whole family's sleeping in three different rooms, will everyone benefit from the mag Healy? You know, there's a a ten foot. Um, diam approximately ten foot diameter of you know about five feet on either side of the Nihili. So unless your rooms are all very very um, close together, you know the it, it's the 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 maximum impact is going to be within that ten foot diameter. You can even explain this many times that it doesn't just stop at ten feet and that's that's the end, uh, but it, it the intensity drops off significantly the further away you get from the Nihili. That's why you want to be within that ten foot. Um, diameter yeah no different than like your radio stations in your hometown guys um if, if you tune in a radio station and you're local in your town and then you start driving out of town how far away do you get before that station starts to become staticky right it first it gets a little bit staticky uh and then it drops off completely right but it's quite some distance isn't it um there's a there's a intermittent point between highly effective staticky and completely gone so um and if we look at things from a quantum perspective um honestly uh magnetic signals transmissions are universally ab uh, available i mean they're just minute in their amplitude so as jake said healy has studied how far the effective amplitude of the signal is and it says okay 10 feet is what they've studied and they found the maximum effective amplitude of the signal amplitude means how strong it is right uh, frequency is um is a duration of of cycle in time and frequency um can be present no matter what the amplitude is so, okay we're looking at two different things how strong is the signal versus the signal itself okay so healy mag healy's putting out a signal 
um, Healy itself is putting out a signal. The maximum effective range has um, been tested, studied, and said, this is it. It's X, 10 feet, three feet, whatever it is. Doesn't mean that it's not still there present throughout the entire universe. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like how much it's been diluted. Okay. Uh, so Sheila is coming back to us here about um, the scans. And she says that the ran those scans and then lists were generated in the blue app, um, but then went back and returned to those lists and they were different. Now put in a ticket for that. I want customer service to actually look at your account, look at your lists and see if we can see what's, what's going on there. But let me give you a little, um, a little food for thought because this is an intelligent system and a list that's generated is based on the present moment of needs in the body, present moment. Then you run those, those present moment um, ingredients within the list and the body shifts and changes. So I've personally witnessed the arrangement of some of that stuff change and priority lists, priorities within that arrangement change, because now we apply that list again to the same body, the same client, um, because it's in the client record. It's in the client record, right? It is, it is uh, assigned to the client. And so you're a different version of you each moment. <laughs> So I'm just saying, I, this, this is what I've discovered, and, and this is my opinion, but we want to make sure that there's not something going on within your software. Because there, there has been some issues with that. Okay. Um, so there was one other, Henry answered this other Mag Healy question in the, the chat there, but it was, uh, can you run a program, um, a Mag Healy program at the same time that you're, vibrating programs from the analyze app so yeah i mean there's we've, we've talked about this um on some of our, our past calls and healy for beginners and beyond how to uh, run a mag healy program and another program within that same app the healy 2 app uh whether it's using microcurrent or whether it's using um the coil but it's it's even easier <laughs> if you're using the mag healy connected to the healy 2 app um, and then connecting your other Healy device to the Analyze app, but you don't need to hard close that app because they're they're two different devices, each connected individually to or solely to those those different apps. So, yeah, you can definitely definitely do that. Yeah, there's little <laughs> there's little workarounds, and I, I mean, early on, uh, I'm an I'm an electronics engineer, so I was <laughs> I was reverse engineering a lot of this technology. <laughs> And figuring out all kinds of fun little workarounds. I was using the dual Healy, multiple Healy's at once from the same app before that ability was even here. And I just, there was just ways to get around things. But anyway, um, yeah, that's great questions there. Yeah. Uh, Sheila asks, is that biofeedback? I'm, I'm sure she's asking about how I was explaining to Bob how, um, how this body in resonance is giving information to the Healy and the Healy then implementing through the resonance frequencies of the body. Is that biofeedback is the question. Well, so biofeedback, if you look at bio, meaning the biology of self and feedback, meaning information back and forth between a device and the body. Yes. So there is also a term in out there on the market in terms of biofeedback, which has intellectual rights to it. Um, around a certain technology. So in Healy's world, or in the term biofeedback, and the modality in which Healy interfaces with the body, uh, that is a biological feedback in terms of resonance from the body to the, um, uh, to the Healy, and then the Healy back to the body. So that is, in the, in the form of description of biofeedback, it is biofeedback. <laughs> so you know, and it, it, it's, it's a great system. I mean, it's a highly intelligent system, if you ask me. Okay. Um, so Sheila says, I know, but it changed. It was just a fluke. No big deal. It's one of the greatest devices. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you already went through all the questions about the Mag Healy. Yep. In different rooms. All right. 
Where are we? Am I? So there was a, um, a, well, was a, a comment uh, from Kathy saying using resident to remote analyze a person run programs. Well, I mean, join us on Thursday, 3 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. We're going to have a whole hour long segment specifically on doing um, a resonance analysis for a remote uh, client. So that I'll put the link into this call here as well. But that's HealyFBB.com. We'll take you right to our Zoom meeting at 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Yes, definitely join us, Kathy, because it's going to be all things remote. All things yep. remote. So <laughs> who is this benefiting? Me, pers the person, the client? Yeah, get on there. We're going to talk all about that. <laughs> all right. Uh, so here's kind of a... I like this comment. My cousin is experiencing tremendous gains in her first month of use, including pain elimination, rapid wound healing, all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, yeah I mean, great. you know, that's, that's an experience somebody is having. All right. I love it. Um, oh, we you fixed the uh, Lindley's issue with the the not finding the device <laughs> oh. turned off the bluetooth on the iphone reset the device and now the resonance plus has connected again <laughs> Woohoo! so write All that right. down. write that down <laughs> yeah. write that yeah. down because it, it, the, uh, here's the thing is i have so many times people say well i did that i'm like did you do it in the sequence i told you <laughs> Well, I, I turned off my device and I turned it back on. I turned my Bluetooth off and back on. I said, no, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> There's a certain sequence because um, when we're talking about uh, the, the digital world, um, there, there's logic to it. <laughs> and uh, we need to work within that realm. So follow that sequence. <laughs> okay. Okay. Kathy makes a statement here, using resonance to remote analyze a person and run programs. Yep. <laughs> if that's a question, <laughs> but that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the Healy uh, blue dot, right? And uh, we're going to be doing a remote session, everything from setting up the client. Like you saw, you saw the, the flyer Jake showed, everything from setting up the client and then understanding the role uh, and how to, what's the modality we're doing this? Are we doing a text back and forth to, no, I'm going to show you, we're going to talk about how to do all that. I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts. You know, for you guys that have been on the Tech Tip Tuesday before, <laughs> I, I tend to be, I had a friend of mine say, well, um, I am the cliff notes. You are the documentary. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're going to kind of have a, a documentary on how to do this. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the how to, the nuts and bolts and the why force. <laughs> we're going to try to fit that all in an hour i think we can do it <laughs> yeah and whatever we don't cover we could do a part two possibly so. <laughs> we can do a part two yeah um okay there's one about uh, the mag healy for my husband's 100 percent um pacer dependent in other words i'm sure you got a pacemaker right he does well with the coil. Um, we are told it's fine, but to always check with our doctor, please understand that. So in other words, the question is here, I want to get a Mag Healy for my husband who has got a pacemaker or some kind of a stimulus heart triggering system. Um, yes, it's always good to, to uh, work with your physician. And a couple of reasons. One is that it, it, ask the physician to actually understand a little bit more about this technology. Now, remember the physician works for you. what I just say? The physician works for you. Don't let them blanketly tell you no. Say, look, have you studied this? Have you looked at this? Have you partnering with me? Partner with me, right? And because I believe in this technology, partner with me. And, and in the medical community, they understand the placebo effect, right? Every drug study has to have a placebo, a, 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 Blind drug study has to have a placebo in there so that we can um, understand the effects of someone's beliefs. 
So have the doctor work with you closely and then he will be educated or she will be educated on this technology as well. So yeah. it's a partnership. I mean, as she mentioned, the coil, the pacemaker is not a contraindication for the coil, but for the Mac Healy, if you read through the instructions for use, it does say not for use by those with a pacemaker or heart disease. So, you know, if you go to your doctor, he's going to ask, well, what does it say in the instructions <laughs> for use or the manual? Well, it says not to use it. I don't, I don't think he's going to override that. And we as Healy corporate aren't going to tell you no. any different advice other than what's in there, you know, of course. So that's not really for us to pro provide you a workaround for one of our warnings in our, in our manuals. But. We I hope go. you can understand why. So. Yes, these are delicate, delicate yeah. situations, right? And we don't, nobody wants to be responsible for someone's you yeah. know, suffering. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, where else? Um, oh, Bob had a question. Are these very valuable meetings archived anywhere to enjoy? Yes, they are. So that's our Healy um, America's page on YouTube. Just go to HealyAmericas.com. It'll take you right to our YouTube channel. And all these recordings are typically added within, you know, two days or so of when the call is over to that page. Uh, if you can't find it that way, you can just go to Healy World America's um within youtube itself will take you right to our page as well and and definitely click on the subscribe button and then on the notification button and you'll get notified every time a new recording pops up right and yeah we we uh we hyperlink every single topic that we cover on the call so if you go to the description of each of the calls you can just go right to the segment that we discussed whatever you know thing you wanted to to hear more about or review again so yeah, I love that. It's such a huge tool because you can go in and you don't want to listen to the whole call, but you heard that on that call, they were the Mag Healy and you can just go scroll down. Oh, Mag Healy, click right on the little hyperlink and you go right to the content, like super good. And there's not just Tech Tip Tuesday there. There's there's the What's Up Wednesdays. There is the Healy for Beginners and Beyond. There is some really cool stuff around. Um, I think there's a couple of frequencies and friends in there as well as some recordings that customer service has done about some you know, yeah, there's some like overviews of you know how to submit a support ticket or reply to a support ticket, that type of thing. So, yeah, very valuable. We've got there's hundreds of hours of content in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> get a bag of popcorn and just binge watch, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever you like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Julie says, How many Healy's have you used at one time on one person with microcurrent and/or a coil? Is there a limit to how many? um of the new pink apps can be run at once so most important is that the body that's being receiving be the rudder we we need to listen to the body folks i'm going to tell you that these microcurrent programs they have um there's there's a uh, there's a tr trifecta or even more than that of modalities in which it's using so first of all it's looking at you as a body doing an analysis finding the resonance of your body and then it's looking at the issue in other words the the reason that the program is was designed and then it is it's finding resonance or or coherence and incoherence so in other words if you want to mm, if you just want to down regulate some kind of discomfort in the body then you want to up regulate energy right Downregulate certain things within the nervous system, upregulate other things within the within the mind and and perception. So some of these programs will feel like a detox, right? And so um, because we're trying to get rid of certain things, including including stuck emotions. So um, just like if you go in and have a deep tissue massage, and the masseuse tells you hydrate before you get here, move your body. And hydrate after right so um so this is the reason for this is because when that massage is done it's releasing toxins within the fibers and the cell structures of the body and they go back into your bloodstream and you want to allow the body's natural elimination process to get rid of them that's where you hydrate and allow the kidneys and bladder and all that to work it's 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 miracles the body does the rest 
Well, same thing with the healing. This is why we talk about hydration, not just for current flow, but also for elimination, the process of getting rid of toxins that are put back into the bloodstream. We want to make sure and do that. So how many can you do in a day? Three is what Healy, three to four is what Healy's saying. But measure, if one puts you into a, 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 a tailspin, <laughs> right? um, then allow your body to heal from that. Don't do it again. Hydrate, move your body, ground yourself, do some self-care, uh, and then take it. So I, I, I've been doing this for years, three years, over three years. I'm a kind of a performance nut, and I'm the experiment all the time. So I, I, I'm not going to really tell you to hook up, do what I do, because I've been doing an experiment. And sometimes I've overdone it. I felt like my entire skeletal structure was vibrating. <laughs> That's a bit uncomfortable. But I knew what I was getting into. So um, so test yourself before you test someone else. Okay. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. The last part of that question, just to, to close here, was a limit to how many the new Pink app, the new Healy 2 app can run at once. Because you're, you know, we've, we've showed many times how to run a Healy and a Mag Healy at the same time, that kind of thing by starting the program and then disconnecting or hard closing the app because that program continues to run on that device even after you're no longer connected to that app it'll finish whatever the duration of the program was you know and by doing that there's really you're not necessarily a limit because the, the Helio app isn't connecting to multiple at the same time it's connecting to one at the same time and you're controlling one at the same time whether it's a Helio device or a magli device is just one and the other ones are running based off when it was connected the program that you sent to it it's continuing and finishing to run that program you know i was at we were at an event a couple months ago where i hooked up i connected and and started programs eight different mag healy's <laughs> using the healy 2 app by just going through that whole process connect start the program adjust the intensity hard close the app turn on the next mag healy connect you know over and over and over again and it you know it works it works great so yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So remember what I said earlier, when when the when the 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 Healy app is sending to the Healy hardware, it goes to the memory of the hardware. Once the Healy starts to run, you don't need the app anymore. So that's how you actually do that. So we are, folks. I've had a lot of fun. I didn't. I mean, it's, our hour flies by all the time. Um, quick little lightning round thing. Kathy's asking again about the remote section section or the session we're going to do. Am I? Am I? Um, remote scanning myself or another person. We're remote scanning another person. That's what we're going to be doing. We're remote scanning another person. So this other person can be across the planet. Okay. So this is the cool thing. That's what we're going to be doing. So join us for Healy for Beginners and Beyond this Thursday. Um, it's at uh, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. And Jake and I will be rocking it up there um, and talking about remote stuff. stuff. So, Jake, anything for the lightning round you want to answer real quick before we run? No. no. See okay. you all on Frequencies and Friends tomorrow and Healy for Beginners and Beyond Thursday at 3 Eastern. Right on. See you all next week. Love you, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you later.